31. 31 of the Playmaker Podcast. I'm Nikita Monroe Thomas. I'm Reggie Coleman. And our special guest today, the one, okay, the only <laughs> fan favorite, Lakeisha Sutton. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for being here today. It's going to be a very interesting episode here. Interesting and fun. Very fun. That's so fun. we want to first thank you for this opportunity and thank you for having us at your beautiful spot. You guys will get some some uh, pictures or some video of that, but we just want to say uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity for having us come here in your spot and we see what you're doing and where did this vision come from of having this building and all the stuff that you want to do with inside the building and stuff like that? Um, I want to say it started maybe like 2013. Mm -hmm. I was always um, writing notes in my notebook. Um, I traveled the world, literally, so I get to see other establishments, other structures, infrastructures. And I knew that we didn't have anything like this in Mercer County, where it isn't just a gym, it isn't just a recording studio, but it can be whatever we make it to be. And so I started looking for the spot maybe a year ago, and there was no warehouses in Mercer County. There was literally one, but it was like eight racks off top. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't want to jump off the porch crazy like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that it was all timing and God because I was ready to be like, you know what? I'll go to another city and do it. And then about two months ago, the realtor hit me up and I was like, ready to go. Yeah, my money saved. So everything was in time. So you talk about having your money saved. What was that process like? Because, you know, a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs. They want to just hurry up and get in. They see... <laughs> You know, they see, the, they see the glitz and glam on social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how was that process of saying, all right, I had a dream in 2013 to see it come to fruition in 2019? How was that process? Um, I think it was all just planning. Like, you know, we sit in school, we take notes, we, yeah. we do classwork, we do homework, we get tests and stuff like that. Yeah, so I just put myself on a very uh, strict plan. I was like, okay, I'm going to take my globe charter checks, save those, mm -hmm. not cashing out, buying nothing crazy, nothing materialistic. And I just always had my goal in the back of my mind. So when I would see people taking trips, doing this, doing all these things, I was stacking my bank account. And so when the guy hit me up, you got to have a certain amount of money down. You got to have good credit. You got to have all type of stuff that I didn't know before. But I'm happy that I was able to go through the process so now I can educate people if they want to, you know, do something similar. I want to take it back to the beginning. How did Fan Favorite start? How did that name come about? And... What made you keep pushing to make it what it is today? Um, I would say fan favorite started back when I was in high school, but my name, my nickname was like Stat Sheet. It wasn't fan favorite then, but I think the essence of being authentically myself, being someone that, you know, I'm going to do it my way. I see what they're doing, but I still want to do it this way, um, with or without a blueprint or a mentor. Um, it was officially coined in college when mm -hmm. I was trying to leave South Carolina. And my coaches was like, nah, you're the fan favorite. Everyone likes to come watch you play. Your lines are the longest for autographs. That's your name. Um, Janae and Fee actually started my social media because if anybody knows me in real life, I'm very, like, introverted and kind of private. But they was like, you need a social media, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. And they made everything fan favorite, so I guess it just stuck. Shout out to Fee and Janae. Yeah. <laughs> they listen every week. Yeah, it was Loyal listeners. Shout out to them for real, for real. So what does fan favorite mean? Fan favorite um, starting out, it used to represent like the underdog, mm -hmm. and then I quickly had to change that connotation because you hear about underdogs, but fan favorite could be whatever that person needs it to be. For me, it's just being a leader, it's being um, innovative, being authentic, being fearless, being confident, um, just really being a radical and not caring what he doing, she doing, they doing, like you're just in your own world, you're just in your own world. What I know it's ups and downs being an entrepreneur. Um... Even with this podcast, I was about to give up. I was by myself. Keita had one on her own. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I can't do this by myself. I don't know if she can. So no, it's very difficult. I hit her up. I was like, Keita, you trying to hop on with me? I thought that was the dopest thing ever, too. I was really excited when you guys like, <laughs> yeah, collaborated. Doing a podcast by yourself, shout out to people that can do it. It's very, it's very intense yeah. because you have to have everything down like to a science, all your topics and everything like that, you can't really make a mistake in, in, in all actuality because you don't have anybody to have your back. Like, I could say something wrong or be wrong about something. Reg may have the fact and he could come and back it up or vice versa. So it's like a team. I'm like Steph Curry. He like Draymond. And, um... <laughs> wow. I just told you earlier, really Draymond getting exposed, but we, we'll talk okay. about that later. Alright, we can play then. But yeah, like, how did how is building your team and, and having people in your, on your circle... That's for you. And how important is that to be an entrepreneur? I think that 
anything that people want to do as far as entrepreneurship, any new endeavors, you definitely need a team. Mm -hmm. And it's not so I think people get it mistaken, like if you don't show up and support every single day, you're not on my team. But it's some you know, people have real lives, they have bigger things that they're worried about they're trying to handle. So I think it's if you find people that one believe in your vision and then you make your vision about them too, it's not just like me, 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 me. I figured out how to way a way to incorporate all of my friends where it's like, yeah, this is my vision, this is my dream, this is my platform. But you guys are talented as well, so you just jump on and just make it you know, you add value to it. Right. And I think like when you think of um, how gold is made, you gotta go down deep, deep, deep into the earth, you gotta extract it, you gotta mix different metals to make it really pop. Right. And I think that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for my team. So from being fan favorite, the basketball fan favorite, how did you transition from being a basketball fan favorite to now this entrepreneur? All the things you do in the community, y'all go on her social media and see all the things that she's doing in the community. Yeah, six years of work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So how did that change from being a basketball fan favorite, doing everything on the court to transition into the entrepreneur that you are today? Um, I think it's it, the basketball and entrepreneurship is kind of uh, parallel. They're parallel. They marry each other because I think to, you guys know more than just like I know. To play basketball, you have to be... Um, committed, you have to be on time, you got to be um, tough-minded, you have to mm -hmm. practice your game, you have to watch film, there's so mm -hmm. many different ways that you can elevate your game besides just going out there and throwing the ball up. And so with entrepreneurship, I, I kind of tell myself that I put myself through my own like master's program. Mm -hmm. I didn't go pay $100 million for a master's, I just really went out there and did the work. Like I, I read books, I wrote business plans, I actually um, visited different areas and I just... Mm -hmm. Everything that I read about, I wrote about, I went out and did it. And I think a lot of people kind of get stuck into reading books and they, one book, the next book, the next book, and they never go out and actually experience it. So I think that being a basketball player, being competitive, being, you know, uh, goal-oriented, that mm -hmm. just translated over to my, my life as a CEO. And it's, it's exciting to see that you are living out, I guess, your dream. Because um, a lot of people talk about doing things uh, a lot, yeah. especially in our area, but in the world, and uh, they don't live it out. They don't go out there and do what they want, want to do or aspire to do. Um, and it's just amazing to see you doing it and making it happen and impacting youth, adults, just people worldwide. Your, your brand is worldwide. Um, and it's amazing to see people tell you, a lot of people don't tell you, but... Mm -hmm. As long as you know you're making a difference and you know that, that's all that really matters. Like, for me, I pray every night. I don't want to get too spiritual. No, I ain't never no, you I, spiritual. I, I pray. Oh, it's all good. Good. I, I pray every night and I say, as long as we impact one person a day or a week, we did our job. Correct. So, um, I know you impact a lot more and, and that's just inspiring to me. I'm sure it's key as well. Exactly. Um, I just wanted to, you know, say that before I cry. Uh, no, <laughs> no, no, I um I appreciate it. I definitely don't take it for granted because like you said, when you spoke about you wanted to give up and when I was mm -hmm. first seen it, I was like, Oh, this is dope like and I told Keith the same thing. I'm like, I don't watch sports all day mm -hmm. but I get to learn it through y'all podcasts because I'd rather listen to y'all mm -hmm. than watch ESPN all day. Right, like I just right. I'm busy. I don't have time to sit in front of a computer but while I'm driving, if I'm doing something, I just throw on the Playmaker podcast and just kinda even seeing how y'all just started out separately now y'all together and y'all on episode thirty one. Like yeah. it's 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 strength, it's strength it's in numbers, yeah. Yeah. To piggyback what Rich said, yeah, doing the podcast by yourself is very difficult. Um I was doing the podcast, I was just tired of complaining about Whatever I was complaining about, all right, man, I'm gonna do it. Bought the bought the mic, everything, and then you do. The, I did the first episode. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I didn't recorded this. I don't, I did my first episode. I recorded it like 14 times. Like I just mm -hmm. couldn't. My voice sounded weird. Just I wasn't confident the in the context of it. I wasn't confident in what I was saying. So I'm like, bet I'm watching YouTube videos. Like you said, when you read and stuff like that, you really gotta engage, write notes down, stuff like that. You gotta, edu you gotta, you gotta educate, educate yourself because yeah. at the end of the day. A lot of people, are, they're not out here trying to give you the blueprint. Because honestly, to keep it 100, it's their blueprint. Yeah. So they don't necessarily have to give it to you. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a lot of people are not really trying to give you that game of how it is to start a podcast. And especially to be on your own or have a partner like me and Reg. It's very difficult um, in the sense of just trying to do it on your own and, and learn. And, you know, it's just like it's super hard. So how did you take all the stuff that you learned and put it into now what you have your own business and stuff like that. How did you take all the knowledge and stuff that you learned on your own? Like you said, you didn't go to school. I had masters. No, no master's. How did no you take all that? Degree, no and mentors, no you know financial backing. None of that. Exactly. How did you do all that? Because, you know, like, if people look at your story, I make sure y'all read the book. Um, 
I, I've known you for a very long time and we came from Seen the same it. mud Seen together, it. you know what I'm saying? So from us, from our backgrounds, our, our parents don't honestly know about financial literacy. How did you teach yourself? Um, honestly, I would say everything is like God. I feel like when God gave me the vision, it was so clear. It was like, this is what you're going to do. This is how you want to save your people, save your family, save yourself. Go do it. Like, th it was so simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone out there is like spiritual or like visionaries, but it was so easy. All I had to do was just follow the plan. You know, through all the detours, the speed bumps, the people that came and went. It's just like I stayed committed. My team stayed committed. The ones that was really meant to be here for this type of journey where now we have our own building. Mm -hmm. Like, I gave my people a key. I'm not like, if I'm not here, you can't come in. Like, y'all been in the trenches. Y'all been here. Here's a key. That's my way of showing my appreciation for their time because I wasn't paying people. You feel what I'm saying? And I, I, I made it clear at first. I was like, I can't put nobody on the payroll, but I do know every opportunity I gave y'all right there, if, if y'all want that opportunity. Correct. And now we're in a position where my people are able to be paid and pay themselves. So exactly. I'm proud of that. Um, and then I think, too, on the journey, I took a lot of, not so much losses financially, but there would be people that would see it and then come in and, like, we'll have an event. And, and then just me, like, just staying focused. They grab all my merch and I look over, like, I just paid money for that. And yeah. you taking it for free. Not wearing it, not promote like you just trying to be in the picture right now. Mm, There's people in France and in Bulgaria that wants to actually buy the merch. So it's, mm. I had to learn that lesson of like everything that I I have access to shouldn't be for everybody else. Um, second thing is I had people that came around and was like, it's like you guys are talking about uh, your podcast and you're like, yeah, we gonna go worldwide with it to France. People in the room are gonna be like, yo, I was in the room. You said we're going to France. I'm the president. I'm the co-founder. Mm, like, and it's saying. really y'all. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? You just giving other people opportunity to be a part of that journey. Correct. And if they're on that journey and they learn some tips, some nuggets, and they go do their own thing, that's hats off to you guys for leaving the blueprint. That's true. But I had people coming in trying to like infiltrate the system, saying mm -hmm. that they created my logo. <laughs> like it was just, like weird. And I never talk about it because my lawyer told me not to. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm happy that I took those L's early because if I was in my own building and letting anybody in here doing whatever, then I, I see would what just, you're saying. Yeah. It would all be for nothing. So Speaking of the book, um, it came out last year, a little yep. over a year ago. Um, how long did it take you to write it? And what's, give a little, I guess, synopsis of what's in it. Honestly, if someone told me not to ever admit this, but I just got to keep it 100. <laughs> I wrote the book in like... 2016 when I was in Bulgaria mm -hmm. um the reason why you know over there is a whole different time zone yeah. and I the fans kept asking me the same questions over like where you from how did you make it how did you build your brand mm -hmm. and so one day I had nothing but time I just wrote down every question off my Instagram and just started plugging in paragraphs mm -hmm. so then last year I met a um, lady named Trish Lee who has like 11 books from Trent, New Jersey and I knew again research I knew how to produce it myself through Amazon, mm -hmm. but I was like, let me collaborate with somebody so they can, you know, feel equally as important and be a part of the project and not do it myself. Mm -hmm. So I already had the manuscript gave to her. She had, mm -hmm. she didn't have to make no edits, no changes, no nothing. We just added mm -hmm. the cover to it and we just put it out on my mom's birthday. But um, about the book, it just kind of talks about entrepreneurship, how to build a team, how to um, battle peer pressure and bullying and uh, just how to boss up without no excuses. Like... Everybody wait for people to come and save them and like, I want to help y'all. Like, truth is, people don't want to help because then when they start helping, then you become competition and you might take off further than them. Yeah. And they, they want to see you do good, but not better than not them. Not better than them. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's tough. just, it's, it's, it's sad that it's like that, but that's just how it is. Because if you look at um, millionaires and I, I've been able to be in rooms with millionaires and just, they, money is not even a thing to them, like, mm -hmm. but the, they help each other, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. how they become. Like, if I only got a couple hundred thousand, all right, boom, I'm gonna invest in you because you're gonna get your million, and you gonna go invest in that person. And that's how they move. But with us, it's like, oh, you doing fan favorites? I don't know. You did. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna she go start my own teacher, which is cool. Like, go start your own thing. But it's like, if you really don't know how to do it, then just do it with some don't shadow. Be don't be like, afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to show love. And I think that's what I'm most proud of is because I know who show love. I know who support it. It's all in my emails, my website. I could look at every, I know my biggest selling fan. Like I know Correct. all my details. And I know, mm. even without paying for merch, I know who support, repost, shut up, the little things that matter. But it's just like, without those people, I wouldn't be in this building today because all that helped me save money. You know Correct. what I'm saying? Exactly. Like save money, the blueprint. 
and it's unfortunate, but a lot of people won't ever give credit until like people pass away. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put Nipsey on the wall. First thing you walk in, you see Nipsey because where I did have a master's program or somebody from the town that's doing what I'm trying to do, nobody, hey, let me help you. Hey, let me look at what you have going on and let me plug in some resources. Mm -hmm. I listen to his music, follow his movement since like 2012 and that's just my homage to Nipsey. Like I, Nipsey taught me, honest to God. He definitely uh, lead a lot of Jews in his music and his interviews and it's unfortunate that his passing, people had to get it. But I was crushed. A lot of people were crushed, including me. I wasn't the biggest fan of Nipsey because I just wasn't up on his music. Because I'm really not up on a lot of music because I'll be listening to a lot of podcasts. Because I'm just be trying to learn about finances. This is just where my vibes been for like the last five years. I want to buy a house. There's a lot of things I want to accomplish with my finances. We're so going to do, I'm, all, I'm really, we, we I, do all that stuff. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't really that. been off music. But um, shout out to my boyfriend. He put me on Nipsey like a year ago before he passed. I'm like, this ain't even music. This like he preaching. Like, he reading you. Like, anything you going through, you can put a song on. Like, all right, bet, I'm going through this. And they've got a song for it. So it was just unfortunate that it had to be, uh, his death had to come like this. But he left so much. And um, the legacy will always continue with him and his family. And I'm glad that you put this in here so people could see. And the conversation will always be talked about. Yeah, people he, don't know who he, he, made, a they, they he made a difference. He made a difference. What's your favorite Nip song? Listen to Nip. See let me tell you something real quick. And key to not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have favorite songs, right? Yeah. Probably don't know the name of them. Mm -hmm. And don't know the words. But that I like the song. I'm like, yo, people, other people be like singing the song, rapping the song. Yeah. I get a little jealous. I'm like, I can't even do that. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of songs that I like from Nip and many other people, but I couldn't tell you about like, this song. I think what was cool about him besides his music that kind of spoke for itself is like, he wasn't afraid to show love to people. Like, whereas it get weird because you start out as peers and mm -hmm. everyone wants to reach the top person, but they, they don't look left and right. Like, my, my people about to be the next top people. Exactly. So I think that's what Nipsey did. And then he really, in the industry, because I'm in the entertainment industry as well, it's so fake. Like, everything is so fake. But he didn't be fake to get on nobody album, nobody magazine. Like, he stuck to his own lane. And, he made a way for himself. Like the world has heard about him because of his passing and his store, but Nip been out here for years, like fifteen years. Oh yeah, moves. for sure, for sure, for sure. And they show old interviews of him. He always been that smart, and he always been that type of guy that want to support his community. And it's unfortunate that he passed in his own community, but he wouldn't have wanted no other way pertaining to. He was never going to leave his community. He wanted the store there for a reason. And I know a lot of people be like, "What? Why would you have a store in your community?" That's just how he was. At the end of the day, he wanted to hire people in his neighborhood. Mm -hmm. He wanted to help people in his neighborhood. At the end of the day, that's all we want. We always want. We all want to help the people in our community. Not everybody, but the majority of us. Because at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, I don't do the podcast for the money. The money come, thank you. Yeah. But that's not. It's, it is what it is. The money. Don't let money can be so blinded to the to your life. Because at the end of the day, you could go broke at any moment, and then who were you for the money? Mm -hmm. That's just unfortunate, but. This is definitely dope. This I think it's going to be cool, too, because even with the, the Fan Favorite Club, we're in a position now where, like, my brothers, they both got two felonies, like, just all some, like, childish stuff that they did, not knowing they were making mistakes. Correct. And so they can go get a job, but it's going to be the slummy jobs that have you in there from, like, 9 in the morning to, like, 12 at night paying yeah. you nothing, $400. Yeah. So I'm, like, I'm in a position really to create um, economic empowerment, not just for my people, but... Somebody, somebody else that might be 10 minutes away that just can't find a job. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, minimum wage ain't that much anyway. But if you come in... It's 25. That's crazy. Like, you got to... I think we're we in a position where, yeah, we'll do, you know, basketball, soccer, um, performing arts, different things like that. But we can make this whatever we want to make it. You feel what I'm saying? We don't got to go to New York, Philly. They're going to come to us. And that's what I'm really proud of. Yeah, I'm glad you made this building again because... People pass through, train, go to Philly, like you said, New York, right uh, Camden, everywhere else but train. <laughs> exactly, um, yeah. That's true. Whether it's for anything, sports, entertainment, uh, jobs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like with this podcast, it's, it's tough because we don't have that outlet like Philadelphia does or New York. Um, they have a bunch of studios and whatnot. Warehouse spaces and office spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Let them go in there. Right, and... We talked before before you even got it. Uh, you said, if y'all need it, I got a space for you. And I appreciate that. Um, but th we need more spaces like this to 
empower the youth, empower just people in general in our neighborhoods because most a lot of people in the hood didn't have this like this a mentor or somebody to look up to, somebody to talk to when somebody they need to. to. Yeah. Um and you're that person. Hopefully one will be that person soon. Y'all that have, y'all have people already. We trying, we trying. Oh, good. Some life. <laughs> y'all y'all good. But yeah, yeah we, like I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying that we appreciate this. Um but I wanna go back. You traveled the world. Mm-hmm. Um what's one of the I don't want to say the best, but one of the top places you played in or visited um, around the world. Mm. Not you don't have to name one. You can name a couple. Dang, you just put me on the spot. There's so many. Are you talking yeah. about like the city, like you yes. know, or the culture, or wherever you. Oh well, my favorite yeah. place is Ecuador mm-hmm. because I speak Spanish. A lot of people don't know, but I learned it in school. Oh yeah, that's why I call you international. Oh, that's like... why I call you international fan. <laughs> yeah, that was the reason why I call her international. I'm like, what was the reason I call? Oh yeah, she speaks Spanish. Yeah. She traveled the world. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't need a translator in Ecuador. Like I was out there. Like I was a mommy. Like I was just. But then it's like she said, like a mom. So. The other countries I played in, I needed a translator with me mm-hmm. all the time, and I'm very independent. Like if I want to go to a play by myself, I'm going. If I want to go to a seminar, I'm going. Like I didn't have to have my American teammate. Like you want to go? I'm out. I can get around. I can get back. And um, I think it's important because just being able to leave here and you're going to meet so many different people and like, you know, smiles are universal, energy is universal, mm-hmm. but if you can talk to that person, mm-hmm. that's a whole new fan base you just tap into. So um, I've, I've always been big on separating myself from my peers. So in the book, you talked about your mother. How important was she on this journey? Um, my mom definitely was like the first manager, I guess I ever had, best assistant in the world. Um, Takeaway being my mom, I spoke about this at the grand opening. She never said to me, like, all right, you graduated college. You ain't make the make it to the WNBA, so go get a job. Or, like, mm-hmm. you still keep going back overseas. Or even when I, I turned down, like, 80 racks just to come do fan favor. And then and people was like, you wild. And, like, I would have took that bread. And I'm just like, I've done everything with basketball. I want to learn about business now. I want to be a, a freshman in the business world and just really build my way up. Mm-hmm. My mom never, like, pushed me to... Go get a job. Go mm, like she seen what I was doing. She she believed in it. She supported it. When I wasn't here, she was packaging t shirts, calling people. Does it fit? You want to return it? Blah blah blah. Even here, she cleaned the bathroom. I'm like, mom, you don't gotta do this. I can. We can exactly sweep the bathroom. But she just was so proud. Like she she seen every single step as far as my thousand notebooks, the thousand people that come in and out of my life. You know what I'm saying? And the people that was. Here was here on Monday, so that was cool for her to see everybody like a reunion. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, parents need to stop trying to force their kids to do what they want them to do because they got their own talents and their own visions. That's we was just yeah. No, it's so right, sad. Right. It's so sad. Like parents be walling. It's, I, it's I have to say, I just did that recently, and I, I I I sat back a little bit. My brother is out there. He, people already know he he decided to play soccer mm-hmm. like. Put his all into soccer. Mm-hmm. So he not playing basketball. Anymore. Little girl from Nottingham? Yeah. Okay. Um, and he told us, well, he told me, my parents told me, and I talked to him. I'm mm-hmm. like, so what, what went into your decision and whatnot? And he told me uh, he think he has more opportunities. And at first, I'm like, nah, you should play both. You, you'll have more options. But mm-hmm. as I thought about it, I'm like, this is his journey. This ain't our. This ain't our journey. Yeah. Like maybe we want him to play basketball because it's more fun to watch for us, mm-hmm. um, more more so than soccer. But I'm like, bro, do whatever you want to do. Just make sure you don't live with no regrets. Yep. And he said, bro, I don't regret it. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I support you. And that's yeah. all you can do. And um, it's crazy you said that just now. But he'll love that because he was like, tell fan favorite. I said, hi. I'm like, bro. oh yeah, I see him. I see him like a lot of TA. So, but no, I think, I think I think that's important too because, like, so many people they want to make somebody else's life what theirs could have yeah. been. It's like yeah. your life is not over; you can still do something different. But don't exactly. try to make me fall into your box or put your fear that you have with yeah, never I, failed in your life on me. I see it all too often, and it's, it's you can't stop it. But I think to the people that has have these dreams and visions and passions, like. Exist in your own head and just really zone out. Like people are gonna get it once the world get it. Like, but you can't stop because nobody's acknowledging what you're trying to do. You just gotta keep your head down and keep it moving. I think that has a lot to do with how social media is now. Cause when I first, I told Ray social media. When we first started, I'm like, 
bro, like, I'm really expecting more people to rock with me. It's <laughs> me. Like, it's me. Oh, you're going to see. I'm, I'm like, bro, it's me. Like, I support. Like, Everybody, right now, yeah. I support people just off the strength because that's just me. Mm -hmm. You tell me you got something going on, bet. If I can make it, I'm going to make it. You, Oh, you selling shirts to, for your business? Bet, I got you if I got it, bet. But I'm like, man, now that you trying to put yourself on a pedestal or you trying to, I'm like, yo, this is very interesting to see. Like, everybody not rocking with you. Like, they, like, right. like, and it's not even purchasing anything. It's more so like, oh, I listened to the last episode. Dope. Mm -hmm. That's the some, some, some quick with yeah. chicken sandwich. Somebody dating who. I love stuff that don't matter. I see you People posting about the about shade room, but what, you know me. <laughs> you know me. I think a part of that is too, it's like, it's hard for people to look at people they know in a like not in even same yeah, life. not even a bossed up way, but it's just like, oh, that's my boy. Like, mm. I'm serious. Yeah. But it's like when you when a celebrity retweets you or you get that call, like, yo, I love y'all podcasts. Come pull up at midnight uh, NCAA tournament. Y'all gonna be on TV. Everybody gonna be calling y'all. Oh, wear the shirt. How can I buy a shirt? And it's not that you say, no, nah, I'm good. You say, okay, you can buy the shirt. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the back of your head, who being fake and who's genuine? Like, yeah. that's the best part of the, the journey. Is like you know who's who. Like. And that, Speaking of fake and genuine, how did you, you've been, you've been doing this for a minute. How do you maneuver that? Because at the end of the day, <laughs> money got to be made. So you could really fake in my face, but you're going to buy stuff, okay. But then, how do you maneuver that? Well, for me, my, my intention setting out was never like, if you don't buy my shirt, I don't, I don't, I don't deal with you. Like, it's, buying my clothes is the last thing I'm thinking about. It's just like, if you can't be inspired to go be yourself and be true to who you are and live an honest life, then... Fan favorite not for you anyway because that's what it represents. Like I could have easily uh, gave away stuff super cheap or gave away super expensive. People want to buy it because they support me. But it's more like when people show you who they are, you just believe them. Like it's, it's been plenty of times where I supported people that never uh, returned the favor, but I didn't look at them and be like, I don't know who you are anymore. I, what's good? How you doing? Being cordial mm -hmm. and keep it moving. But am I gonna invite them to my like? If I go win a, a Black Girls Rock Award, I'm at the Grammys, or I'm doing something important, no, you won't be there. I see the people that has, that's been there will be at that on my uh, plus one list. So I think about things like that. Like You don't have to buy my stuff. You don't got to repost it. You don't got to do none of that. But actions mean more than anything. Like Because everything on social media is like, I ain't going to like it because you already got 200 likes. <laughs> I ain't going to comment because my friends ain't comment yet. Like, it's weird. That's why I hate social media. Yeah. But stuff like this where you can talk to somebody in person and you can pull up on them, like, that that means more to me than any who's showing love and who not. Like, I really don't care. I never did. <laughs> yeah, social media is very interesting because it definitely paints a, a different type of picture it's of people. It's fake. Everything yeah. is it's fake. A, it's a highlight reel. Like, yeah. But can you even I post I, I stopped caring probably like three years ago about how many likes I get. Oh, man. Because like, so it, it really don't matter. You you show people what's going on and mm -hmm. then get off your phone. I, it don't even matter. Right. You want to show people because <laughs> you want to. If yeah. one person like it, if a thousand people like it, it, it still don't really yeah, matter. Yeah, don't let it consume like, you. Yeah. As long as you know you got real support from people you actually know, mm -hmm. that's all that really matters. All but that matters. we want to wrap it up. A couple more questions. So what's next for fan favorites? Um, what's next for me, actually, we're going to have a internship program mm -hmm. where uh, middle school and high school students will be able to come in here, mm -hmm. um, to go through an interview process, kind of have to get selected to be an intern, mm -hmm. but we have different departments from the fashion and design and merge to video productions and everything that Simone has going on. Um, the business conversations as far as like um, booking, planning, touring, pretty much everything that I do in my day-to-day bringing people to learn that stuff now and give them early exposure. Um, aside from the internship program, we'll be having um, different events. Like this space literally will be open 24 hours. So it's just like, you don't have to go home at eight o'clock. You don't have to go to Philly for three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? Like you can mm -hmm. call, set up an appointment. And if we have space, if it's available, it's for you because there's nothing going on around here. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, obviously I'm still globe trotting, So I'm actually about to go do some PR in London and Germany next week. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, growing a brand and trying to pour into other people and help their brands. Well, you're definitely doing that. Pulling up on, letting us pull up on you. That's what I said. I was like, you know, you know what's so crazy? Like, I've been so, like, intentional about not doing interviews. Because people be asking me, but I'm like, you don't do no research. You don't, you ask me questions that's on Google. Like, not in, like, a cocky way, but it's just like, I've really been waiting for somebody to really 
ask me questions and make me think. And so when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I'm going to just chill, get my spot open. My first interview, I want to be with y'all because I know y'all in real life. I see what y'all doing. I support y'all player podcast. Had you come to the camp in front of the 40 kids and talk about it. They all downloaded it on their phones. Um, but now I'm about to roll out mad content. So I was like, if you annoyed by my social media now, I think you should just unfollow me because <laughs> nah, I think, we I got think a lot of stuff that's about to just drop. I think they're going to be a lot of, you have, you have fans all over the world. Yeah. Oh, the documentary too is going to be called I Believe in Me. Mm. And when yeah. is it dropping? I can't say yet because I wanted to do it on my birthday, which is November 18th, but then I got a call that I'm going to London, so I can't yeah, you don't do it. Too much on your plate, yeah. No, I won't, I'm not here, so yeah, I can't no. do it. Yeah, I can't do it. But um, what we're doing is actually we're going to have kind of the same concept of augmented reality. So if people pull up and they put their phone on the logo, then you can see parts of my documentary. So you got to come to mm. the store. Very Literally crazy. the same concept, my boy told me. Mm-hmm. Same concept, like. Can you watch it on YouTube? YouTube ain't paying me enough. Mm-hmm. But if you're really a supporter, if you really want to learn how to build a brand, boss up, come to the store and put your phone on the logo. Wow, that's dope. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. That's different, right? Yeah, like she was saying, though, about her <laughs> social media, I think, like you said, you're a private person. You only really post what people need to see pertaining to the brand. I think they'll be very excited that you're yeah, Show my personality yeah, more. Yeah, a little bit more. I've been busy, though. I ain't got time for shenanigans. <laughs> like, people was like... You should do this challenge. And I see it, but I'm not focused on that right now. Now that I got my key, I can put my feet up. I'll make a bunch of challenges in here. I can do a bunch of stuff in here. But I don't think I'll, I'm do I've always been... <laughs> I'm going to do a lot of challenges. Not to spoil nothing for y'all. She's not doing no challenges. She's not rapping. She's not dancing. She's she bossing right now. But if you guys want me to do any challenges, you know how to slide on my DM and let me know. We're going to have a dance contest. Oh, ain't no chance. I'm going to win. She don't dance. I'm, I'm, I, have, I have a dance instructor come and teach me how to dance. No, I'm just trying to make oh my right God. But no, um, yeah, no. So seriously, besides the internship program, um, the documentary, uh, the book, I'm actually about to do a, a HBCU book tour where I'm going to all like black colleges and just it's completely free. I'm just trying to empower those kids and that is let them be a part of fan favorite or help them start their own business. Hey, that's dope. You're doing. Oh, that's what yeah, you're definitely. Yeah, you bossing up. Where, where did that idea come from? Because that's dope. For the book tour? Yeah, but have it at HBCUs instead of. I know they're booking you. You, yeah. you did the big colleges and stuff like that if you wanted to. I think for me, when I think about like my influences, is, besides Nipsey, is like Nina Simone, like, you know, just powerful black people. Like, mm-hmm. that. They come from where we come from. And I watch a lot of Unsung, and, mm-hmm. you know, it's the same rags and riches stories, but. They get taken advantage of because they don't understand intellectual property. So I know with this book, I can do a seminar at a college and it, sell it for a dollar. Like as long as they're buying it and getting information, mm-hmm. that's a hundred million people that just brought my book for a dollar. That makes me a hundred million dollars yeah. richer. Yeah, exactly. Not that I'm doing it for money, but I think that you can't put a price on information. And so again, if you can't come to the store and learn more about it, you can read this book. I'm book giveaways. I read to some fourth graders yesterday. They actually want to turn my book into a children's book. So, just trying to balance it all out, and that's why you gotta have a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems like a lot of stuff to do. How do you mentally disconnect from that and just be Lakeisha? Because we're talking a fan favorite right now, the business no. logo, all that. How do you disconnect and just be Lakeisha? Spend the time with your family. Spend the time with your family. Spend the time with your, your, your nieces and your nephew, which yeah. I know you care about so much. How do you have that family time when you're a businesswoman? How do you have that balance? I think that when you when you know what your goals are, everything else kind of falls behind that. And I think that who Lakeisha is is who fan favorite is. It's just that people that are fans don't get they don't get access to Lakeisha's house or Lakeisha's private invite only party unless you are a part of Lakeisha's personal life. But I think that I, I have a good balance because. I've never had to work a job, so it's not like I gotta go to work and I'm tired and I can't see my niece and nephew or hang out with my friends. It's just like every day I just do whatever I want. So I get to make my own schedule and if I wanna chill, I could chill. If I wanna be businessy, CEO ish, I can do that. And I think that people that's been watching me that know me, they know that. Like I literally have my own schedule, so that's dope. I'm a knock on woods. I never work. I never plan on working ever. But hey, hey. I'm telling <laughs> you. Like, it ain't cracked up. No, but I'm saying, I just like, <laughs> okay. I just, 
I just never That's why you did. always ask me questions about work. I'm like, never work. Yeah, I'm like, oh, she'll be like, oh, yeah, 40 hours, 13. I'm like, what's that a week? Like, talk to me in numbers. I don't know what that I'll be like, it ain't enough. But no, that's the thing though, because I think this the sucky part is when I do get an opportunity. Like, uh, Kyrie left me tickets to a game last year when he wasn't even playing, Mm -hmm. or if I'm going to Cali, or I get like a people that book me. I hate saying book because that sounds whack as hell, but (laughs) people that want people that want me to come to like their area, they already know like who's your plus. They see the brand. It's a perception thing. So. If I'm like, yo, Reg, Keita, y'all free? Can y'all, y'all want to ride out? Let's let's go. Everybody be working. So I'll be like, damn. Like, I got to really boss up even more. So I'll be like, how much did y'all pay you? All right, here, I'm going to give you an advance. Just quit your job and just come follow me around. Because that's what other people do. Like, when they make it, they, they bring people yeah, on that. That, that, prove that, that prove their loyalty without money. Because everybody want to come around and have their hand out. But it's like, what have you done? Like, why do you deserve this? Like why? Like what sweat equity do you have in it? Like mm. what sacrifices, what investments did you make? Like you don't just show up and be like You feel what I'm saying? Like that just nah, that, especially if you don't have no skills to follow your money, like never a problem paying, but you gotta have a certain skill set. That's true. You feel what I'm saying? So Any last questions? Nah, I'm good. I think we, I think we done covered everything we need to cover today. I hope everybody hey, you can read the book. You could definitely read the book and figure out and um any questions that we didn't touch can on. Can we give a book away on y'all podcast? Like I don't know how y'all would figure out who should win a book, but I think that would be kind of cool. Yeah, we could do that. Some type of we'll giveaway. I told you I'm not creative, but I can oh, figure something. Oh, some type of giveaway would be. We can yeah. figure something. We'll definitely figure something. But yeah, we're gonna do a book like giveaway. Like I said, you guys want to pull up, do some episodes here. If I'm not here, get mm-hmm. one of my team members and just knock it out. Well, they probably know your um, Instagram, your social media, but give it up, give it out anyway. Um, it's at the Playmaker Podcast on there it everything. Is. There it is. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's Fan Favorite Eleven. Everything. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. I don't really snap like that, but I think your fans would like you to snap. Yeah. I'll be busy. I'm not. I'm not gonna be as busy. I can say that. Yeah, when I think I'm, your fans want a YouTube channel too. I'm just. I'm not. I just see all the stuff on the. Uh, I was looking at your social media. I was reading comments. They, they want to see you more. That's just what I heard. But. Yeah. No. A lot of people do want to see my face more. Yeah. But now that I'm, I'm, my victory lap is is over, so I'm good. I got time. We'll see, you guys. Y'all heard it here first. Little fan favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode thirty-one of the Playmaker Podcast. Thank um, you again for thank joining you. us. Thank you guys thank for you. allowing me to be on your. Historic podcast. Historic. Okay. Would have been cool if I could have been episode eleven, but I ain't gonna Ooh. complain. Wow. We wasn't even together yet. We wasn't, we wasn't a team oh, yet. Right. Right. <laughs> right. We wasn't right. a team yet. We'll 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 take that. But but, but thank you for letting us come to your space. Just talking to you, learning a little more about you. Um, like Kita said. Did you know about me already? We don't know. No, this. Come, on, come on, come oh, on. Oh yes, bro. I'm sorry. But thank you guys for listening um we'll see y'all next week thank you again keisha for joining us kita myself reggie see y'all next week peace peace What's up, family? Thank you guys for tuning in and the continued support. We also want to thank Keisha for speaking with us and sharing her story and her journey of being an entrepreneur. Next week, Keita and I will be talking about the NBA, the Power Midseason Finale, and much more. So make sure you guys tune in. For all of our content, visit our website at www.theplaymakerpodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at the Playmaker Podcast twitter at the playmaker pod and on facebook as well at the playmaker podcast and don't forget to subscribe to all of our platforms whether that be youtube apple Podcasts, or spotify once again we thank you guys for the support until next time peace